five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. On July the 20th, 1969, humans reached the moon for the first time. But now, almost 50 years after the Apollo 11, launching a spacecraft continues to be a really expensive task. So, in this video, I'm proposing an easier, cheaper, non-polluting, and completely theoretical way to put objects into low Earth orbit. The shuttle is based on two principles. Magnetic levitation that induces eddy currents, and the acceleration that a magnetic field produces over a magnet. The shuttle could be a long horizontal aluminum tube, surrounded by solenoids. And the capsule could be a, made from a magnet that is aligned with the external field, and should have back a race in its side. The solenoids apply a force over the main magnet, but they also apply a torque on their weight, so it's important that the capsule is rigid enough to resist it. The halback arrays induce a current over the tube as they are moving, and if the speed is high enough, they make the capsule levitate. And this is how it works. Each solenoid attracts the capsule toward its center, and once it reaches it, the solenoid is turned off to avoid the magnets getting stuck on it. Let's calculate that force. This is the force that a magnetic field supplies over a magnet, where V represents the external magnetic field and M the magnetic dipole moment of the magnet. We make the calculations having in mind that the moment is constant, that it is aligned with the field. Now we calculate the average force per solenoid, and we get this. As we know the formula for the magnetic field inside of a solenoid, we can put it into the one that we calculated to get the expression that we need, that gives the force in function of the moment, the current I, the number of turns per meter of the solenoid B, and the length of the solenoid L. Mu is a constant, the magnetic permeability of Earth. Now, let's calculate the speed that we need to put the object into an orbit 1000 km over Earth's surface. If we consider that the gravitational field is conservative, we can use this equality to calculate the speed. Kinetic energy is equal to this, and this is potential energy. We know the formula for the orbit speed. We put all this into our equation, and we get this speed, 8.43 km per second. We assign the value using our force expression, and we get the length of the shuttle this way. So, the shuttle would be around 107.92 km long. And we prove that it is possible, that science is our greatest tool to overcome any challenge, bringing space to our hands. There's a star man waiting in the sky He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our mind so thanks for watching this video, you can find reference to everything I said in the description and even my own paper about the subject. By the way, I am presenting it to a contest, so share it if you want.